Good morning, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the European Commission's press room today on 21st of October, what well, should be a very busy day indeed here. First, it's a pleasure to welcome uh, Commissioner Marquette Vestaya, who will deliver a statement in a moment uh, concerning three competition cases, and will then be taking some of your questions. This will be followed by a background technical briefing concerning two of these cases. Uh, at 12.30, there will then be a readout of the college meeting by Vice President Zombrowski's, and finally, this will then be followed by a second technical briefing on the completion of uh, the EMU. So without further ado, I give the floor over to Commissioner Vestaya. Thank you. Um, today, the Commission has adopted two decisions. They concern tax rulings uh, granted by Luxembourg to Fiat and by the Netherlands to Starbucks. The tax rulings have artificially reduced the tax burden of both companies, and this is illegal under EU state aid rules. These secessions send a clear message. National tax authorities cannot give any company, big or small, large or powerful, an unfair competitive advantage compared to others. Uh, for most companies, they be big, medium-sized or small, I hope that this is a reassuring message for those who have always paid their fair share of taxes. The tax ruling that we have investigated uh, endorsed submissions by both uh, companies which contained very complex arrangements. We found a large variety of methods, one more complex than the other, and what they did was to put an artificial price tag on transaction between group companies that could have been priced on the market. And these arrangements shifted profits from one company to another in the same group without economic justification. But the result is that companies pay almost no tax on profits made. Our decisions today show that artificial and complex methods endorsed by tax rulings cannot mask the actual profits of a company which must be properly and fully taxed. Just to be perfectly clear, uh, tax rulings as such are legal. If used by a tax authority to give clarity to a company on how its corporate uh, tax is to be calculated, they can give a kind of certainty. But they cannot endorse the setting of prices for goods and services sold within entities of the same group, so-called transfer prices, that do not correspond to market conditions. Doing so would disadvantage all the standalone companies that are not part of a group. A standalone company just have to buy their input on the market and sell their goods on the market. And they are taxed on their actual profits based on what they have had of inputs and outputs. I'd like to go just a little bit more into detail uh, in the two decisions that we took today. And as promised, there is a truly technical briefing uh, afterwards. One decision concerns a tax ruling that Luxembourg tax authorities have granted to Fiat Finance and Trade in 2012. Uh, Fiat Finance and Trade uh, provides financing through loans and bonds to other European companies within the Fiat Group. The Commission's investigation showed that the tax ruling since 2012 unduly reduced the company's tax burden by a total of between uh, 20 to 30 million euros. This is because in the tax ruling, it accepts an extremely complex and artificial method to calculate fiat finance and trades taxable profits, which cannot be justified by the economic reality. As a result, fiat finance and trade only pay tax of a small amount, or a small portion, 
of its then underestimated profits. Uh, the Commission's analysis showed that the taxable profits in Luxembourg would have been 20 times higher if calculations had been done at market conditions. In a separate investigation, we found that since 2008, Starbucks manufacturing has benefited from undue tax advantages. Starbucks manufacturing is the Starbucks Group's only roasting coffee company in Europe. It sells and distributes uh, roasted coffee and other products like cups and teas and pastries to Starbucks outlets in Europe, the Middle East and Africa. Our investigation showed that the tax ruling has unduly reduced tax, Starbucks uh, manufacturing's tax burden since 2008 by a total of between 20 and 30 million euros. It was done mainly in two ways. First, Starbucks manufacturing paid a very substantial royalty to another Starbucks company for using the coffee roasting know-how. This royalty cannot be justified because it does not reflect market value. Other Starbucks group companies and independent roasters are not required to pay a royalty for using the know-how in essentially the same situation. Second, Starbucks manufacturing also paid a highly inflated price for green beans to a third Starbucks uh, company, the Switzerland-based Starbucks Coffee Trading. As a result of these two mechanisms, Starbucks manufacturing's taxable profits in the Netherlands were substantially reduced. The royalty shift a large majority of its profits, which covers coffee, but in reality also co covers the sales uh, from teas, pastries, cups, to the group company in the UK. Uh, this uh, Starbucks group uh, company in the UK is not liable to pay corporate taxes in the UK nor in the Netherlands. Then where do we go from here? Well, first of all, Luxembourg and the Netherlands must now recover the unpaid tax from Fiat and Starbucks, respectively. This will remove the unfair competitive advantage they have enjoyed and restore equal treatment with other companies in similar situations. The amounts between 20 and 30 million euros for each company. Just as one means of comparison, last year Fiat Finance and Trade paid not even 0 0.4 million in corporate tax, and Starbucks Manufacturing paid not even 0 0.6 million in tax. We do not stop here. We continue the inquiries into tax rulings, practices in all EU member states, as well as the ongoing investigations into tax rulings in Ireland, Luxembourg and Belgium. Uh, since 2014, we have a new market investigation tool that requires companies uh, suspected of receiving state support and their competitors to hand over information that we need in our uh, inquiries. And this tool has been very helpful also in these two cases. Uh, more may come, more cases may come, if we have uh, indications that EU state aid uh, rules are not being complied with. Of course, in terms of timing, I stand by what I have said before, that fast is always better than slow, but best of all uh, is to be just. When a case is ready, we will take a decision. And of course, each case is assessed on its merits, so today's decisions do not prejudge the outcome of the ongoing probes. At the same time, it is important to recognize that we cannot achieve fair uh, tax competition in Europe with enforcement of state aid rules alone. We cannot do it alone. The fight against tax evasion 
and tax avoidance can only be won with the combination of enforcement of state aid rule and legislative uh, responses. And that is why it is so important to implement the Commission's action plan for fair and efficient taxation, presented this year by my colleagues um, uh, Valdis Dombrovsky and Pierre uh, Moscovici. Uh, the relaunch of the common consolidated uh, corporate tax base is important because what it does is to close loopholes and mis mismatches between national systems which companies can currently uh, use to avoid uh, taxation. It would also cl close the opportunities for profit shifting. Additionally, more transparency is also crucial. And for this, of course, we need member states to be on board. Uh, I think there are very encouraging signs that uh, national governments are coming around to new reality realities. It is only a few weeks ago uh, that member states passed a proposal for automatic exchange of uh, information on tax rulings when it comes to companies which are active in more than one member state. The G20 finance ministers reached an agreement just two weeks ago uh, to endorse the OECD base erosion and profit shifting project. This project uh, contains revised transfer pricing guidelines that would clear emphasize on the need for taxation to take place where uh, value is created. As a very clear, very basic principle, this is good. I also look very much forward to see the final report of the European uh, Parliament's uh, Special Committee on Tax Rulings, and I would like to use this opportunity to thank them for their very, very strong support of the work that we do in state aid to tackle aggressive tax planning. Last but not least, uh, I think we need a fundamental shift in corporate philosophies. Uh, if it's not there already, uh, paying one's fair share of taxes should be firmly integrated in a company's corporate social responsibility. As I hope that you can see, EU state aid enforcement will play its part uh, as part of a wider package that needs to come together to effectively address corporate tax avoidance and tax evasion. But this, of course, also indicates that we are a big team, both here in the Commission, but also for the Commission, working with the European Parliament, with member states, with OECD, with other international bodies, and of course with the business community, where the huge majority, of course, pay their taxes as they should. I would also like briefly to mention another decision, another important decision that we have taken today. Uh, because we have imposed uh, fines of more than 160 million euros on companies who operated a cartel for optical disk drives. I think everyone knows what that is. We probably have one ourselves. They are used by millions of Europeans in their desktops and laptops. And the companies uh, are Philips, Lighton, their joint venture, Toshiba Samsung Storage Technology, uh, Hitachi LG Data Storage, Sony, Optiac, and Quanta. Uh, these companies colluded on bids for tenders organized by Dell and Hewlett Packard to buy uh, CD and DVD drivers for different durations between 2004 and 2008. For example, they shared information about their bidding strategies and the result of procurement uh, tenders. Uh, Philip uh, Lighton and their joint venture uh, don't have to pay their fine because they were the first uh, to reveal the cartels uh, to us. Our leniency program exists exa exactly to encourage uh, companies uh, to reveal cartels to us. The companies in this case were perfectly aware 
of, uh, of, uh, of the fact that their behavior was illegal. And they took a lot of uh, measures uh, to, be avoid, to avoid detection. Apart from using uh, generic names uh, and abbreviation in their uh, correspondence, they also met in uh, car parks and in cinemas. And no, I do not know what film they saw, uh, but I think everyone is open for guessing. Uh, but whatever the strategies uh, they put in place, they did not escape uh, attention. Uh, an interesting aspect of this cartel is that the co contacts between the companies took place outside of the European Union, in the US and in uh, Asia. Uh, but the effect was very much, very much felt in Europe uh, because the disc drivers were sold into the European Union. And therefore, the message uh, to cartelists uh, is clear. Uh, we will investigate and find anti-competitive behavior and practices wherever in the world if it harm European consumers. Thank you.